Dear viewer, welcome again to our series on 40 days of prayer, the precious day, the ninth day in this series. And we want to invite you to be part of this um, moment of prayer uh, with me right here. And I want to invite you as we start off that you may think about the seven people you're praying for. If you have not chosen a list of seven people, I mean, we are praying for our friends and our family members, at least a list of seven people that we'll be interceding for, for this uh, period of time in the four days of prayer. I want to invite you this uh, morning, we are on the day 9th, and we are talking about a um, very important aspect. You know, yesterday we looked at reaching out to the family and, and providing for the family with a text that said, if you do not provide for the family, you are worse than infidel. So having, uh, you know, reached out to our families yesterday in prayer, we want to reach out to the city. And so this morning, on the, uh, the day 9th, we are talking about reaching your city. Um, Pastor Peter Nyaga, Nairobi Central SDA Church, join me as we pray before we begin this program. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the pre precious moment we have with you as we share from the scriptures and listen from you and have time to talk to you. Lord, we invite your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to share with us just a thought from the text of Dan, uh, the book of Jeremiah, rather, chapter 29 and verse number 7. The book of Jeremiah, chapter uh, 29 and verse number 7, which speaks about God's concern for the city. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. I'll read one more time. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse number 7. The word of God says, And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Of course, of course the children of Israel have been are taken to captivity. And um, God asks them, once they get into that foreign land where they will be enslaved, that they will seek for the peace of the city that they will be exiled into. What amazing text here. God speaks to his people who have been exiled and it tells them in exile in the city of your captors, speak peace to them, seek peace to them, uh, speak good things about them. I mean, God is very much concerned about the welfare of our cities. You see, what I'm getting from this verse is that the cities won't be at peace without the presence of God. The cities won't be at peace without the presence of God in the cities. Now, I also find it here in this text, the means, the way for the presence of God to be felt in the cities is to have the God-fearing people in the cities. Hmm. God says, I want the cities to be at peace so that my people who are in the cities can be at peace. But I'm asking my people who are in the cities then to pray for the peace of the cities without which the cities will not be at peace. God is reminding us that we have a responsibility over the cities. He wants to be in the cities, but the only way for him to be in the cities it is by you being in the cities. And not just being in the cities, but seeking for the peace of the city. But how do we seek for the peace of the cities? We seek for the peace of the cities when we speak 
of the hope that we have in Christ. You see, the many people who dwell in the cities, and of course many of us are living in the cities, uh, 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 you know, across the world, um, uh, urban centers are, are densely populated, and many people live in cities. And so, for the cities to be at peace, we need to be intentional in pursuing that path of peace. And that path of peace or seeking for the welfare of, of the cities, it is when we shall saturate the cities with the gospel. When we shall saturate the cities with the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. People are hopeless in the cities. Very hopeless in the cities. You see, when you look around in every city, there's more that is discouraging spiritually. There's more that is discouraging socially. There's more that is discouraging uh, economically. A and people are hopeless in the cities. The only means for hope to be in these cities it is when we shall bring Jesus in the city. And so this morning, God is appealing to us and appealing to you as a person that you may think of how you bring Jesus to the city. You see, it is Jesus who is the Prince of Peace. <laughs> we will not have peace in the cities without Jesus. You see, the governance leaders, they spent billions of dollars sitting in conference rooms seeking for peace. Yeah. Treaties after treaties. But there is no peace. Why? Because they have not understood that peace comes from Jesus because he is the prince of peace. And so, I mean, the call this morning is that you may think on how you become an influence in the city bringing hope and peace. And so we are praying here in this for the days of prayer, thinking about our cities and seeking that God may give us new methods and new ways on how we can reach out to the cities. I mean, we are in the cities. I am speaking from a city of Nairobi. But, but, but then there are many people, even right here in this city, who are still walking hopeless, devastated, afflicted by every kind of a problem in this world. And it takes you as a disciple of Jesus to, 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 to take Jesus to them. And so we are being invited this morning to be personally um, be involved in reaching out to the city dwellers of our cities. I don't know what to think about it, but, but I'm feel God challenging me to think more deeply on how to run a meaningful ministry in the cities. Uh, think about the street families. You, you th think about many people who are living uh, in, in slum areas and, uh, and uh, many people are, who are struggling every day, jobless people, people sick and you know, you, you can imagine what kind of a life is in the cities. And not just that. Think about the affluence in the cities. People who feel they have it all. They have, they have everything. In fact, they feel they don't need Jesus. You know, in the cities, there are those people who feel desperate of needing Jesus because they, they are looking for wealth, comfort. But there are those who have everything. They don't desire anything. But they are so hopeless in terms of eternal life. Well, they think they're okay, but they're not okay. They have no hope for eternity until you reach out to them. They have the wealth they need, but then they're so much disturbed without peace. Killing each other, committing suicide, living a reckless life like that prodigal son, Beata's life, because they do not have Jesus. Wouldn't you think this morning that it is important for you to ask God personally to direct you or redirect you into a meaningful city ministry? I feel so. 
I feel that God wants you and me today to be redirected to have means and ways on how we can create centers of influence within the cities. We can light some corners of every city where we are with the hope of the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Now, this would happen until we have been renewed in the way we think. Until our hearts have been challenged and transformed to have a desire for the lost sheep in the cities. And so God is inviting us this morning and says, Ask you shall be given, as seek you shall find, and knock the door shall be opened to you. This morning as we pray, God's burden is the city dweller. What are you doing to give them hope? Not just for today, but hope for eternity. I pray that God may challenge you this morning, this afternoon, or this evening, wherever you are. As you think through this message, he may direct you into a way that you can run a meaningful city ministry. You don't have to do it as a church, just you as a person. There is something you can do. You can just sweep. You can just sweep around your life and, 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 and to be clean, you know. I mean, you can just light up your lamp there and, and some people will see light, you know. You don't have to do big things, but just, just start small. Just think of anything and ask God, God, please open my mind to see what I can do as a person. In reaching out to the city I live in. And so, welcome. Come along with me as you seek the Lord in prayer. Because we are praying for the nations, we are praying uh, for the churches, we are praying for our spiritual renewal and commitment. We are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I know you have a list of the seven people you are praying for. And I know you also have many other things. Take time. I may be brief here in this prayer, but I invite you to have more time to seek the Lord and petition and lift all those issues and burdens and requests to him with enough time to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so very much this precious moment. It humbles our hearts to know that you are with us and willing not just to listen but to answer all that we ask of you. Lord, we want in a very special way to remember those who are struggling with sicknesses we have brother Ronald who is sleeping uh, in Nairobi West Hospital. Lord, I know you are a powerful God. I know you can touch him and bring him back to life. We continue to seek and intercede and request of your healing masses because you have said, indeed, whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, you shall grant us. And so that man, Lord, you can call him back to life. We want to pray for our mom, our sister, Beth Sheba, who is in India, Lord, in hospital. As she is going through the treatment there, we remember her this morning. Lord, we remember many others who are sick in hospital, sick at home and struggling with various conditions. Lord, may you visit with your people. Visit with them, Lord. We speak healing in Jesus' name. Give them hope, Lord. We also pray for spiritual healing upon our lives because we need you and we are sick spiritually. Lord, may you heal us through renewing our thoughts and our minds, filling us with your spirit. Lord, we want in a very unique and special way this morning and this day, to remember the cities, beginning right here in the city of Nairobi. Lord, we are committing this great city before you this morning. This is a city that fears you, Lord. Yet we know that the dwellers of this city, many of them are struggling and the captives of the evil one. Lord, we are praying that they may be set free in Jesus' name. You are a chain breaker, many who are hooked up and chained through drugs, addictions, and uh, uh, um, you know, sexual immorality, and those who are struggling uh, with witchcraft and devil worship, Lord, we rebuke those spirit from this city in Jesus' name. My Father, we are praying for the 
the governance, the leadership of this country, Lord. May you reach out to these men and women. Many of them have no place in, your, in their heart, Lord. And I'm praying that you may reach out to them in a unique way in your own spirit, my Father. And you may remind them with all every power, authority, and leadership comes from you. They are your servants and that they can turn around and look up to you and depend on you, Lord. I pray for those who within the leadership know you and fear you and they're struggling because of the environment they find themselves in, my Father. Make them a Daniel. Make them a Joseph. Make them an Esther. That, Lord, they will be able to stand and be the light and the sword in this great city. Lord, we are praying especially now that we're nearing the election time, Lord, that this country will be at peace. We are seeking for its peace, Lord. We are praying for the peace of this country, that it doesn't matter the result of elections. We are praying that we shall remain peaceful. May you, Lord, touch the hearts of these men who every other time when we're doing elections, they will cause chaos in this country. This time round, we are praying for peace of this nation. Because, Lord, doesn't matter who becomes the president of this country. We know these are our brothers and sisters, and anyone can lead us. We are thanking you for them and praying the Lord, whoever shall come through, that one shall be appointed of you. We are praying, Lord, that you shall intervene and withhold the, the, the spirit of strife from this country. We want to remember the cities and the country of Ukraine and Russia, Lord, and all the cities, especially Ukraine, which most of the cities have been destroyed. People have been destroyed. Property has been destroyed. Lives have been destroyed. There's hopelessness in that, that country. My Father, this morning we are praying that we may reach out to that great country and in all those cities. We are praying for peace. Peace, Lord. We are praying that this war may cease in Jesus' name. There's nothing impossible with you, my Father. No one deserves to die because you died for us all. And Lord, I pray that you may, withhold, you may remove that wind of strife in that, that, that country and bring sanity in the hands of those people who are causing chaos and destroying life and humanity. Lord, we pray that you shall reveal yourself to them they will know that they are nothing without you, my Father. They remember that they are just dust and that they ought to behave themselves with integrity and value for life. We want to thank you, Lord, and pray for many other nations who are struggling in the cities across the globe. The evil one assists most of the cities with every kind of wickedness, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lord, this morning we are praying for these cities. We are praying for your presence to be felt in these cities. But more importantly, we are praying for the city dwellers who know you, that they shall fear nothing, but they shall be an influence, a centers of influence around themselves, Lord. That they will influence the cities with the gospel of hope of the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That many shall be attracted, be prepared, and when you come, Lord, you shall receive us to, your, to, the, to the kingdom. So bless us this morning, Lord. But I also pray that you can reach out to our individual situations in our hearts. Meet us at our very point of need. The struggling with economic challenges, food and finances, Lord, a family conflict. And this is the moment, Lord, when you, we invite you to come into our lives and sort out these challenges because we have no other power to depend upon apart from your power, my Father. I pray that may your grace be sufficient. Hold us together. Show us that yet we have not seen the good things you are preparing for us. That this momentary trial and affliction will not intimidate our faith but we shall be bold enough to stand firm and we know in whom we believe it. Even though the world shall collapse upon us, we shall never waver from faith. Lord, help us to be faithful in this age. Help us to be focused, awaiting the soon coming with the hope that, Lord, yonder when the trumpet will sound, we know whether dead or alive, we will be taken forever to live with you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, dear viewer. Continue following these programs. Once again, I remind you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please just click that red button. But I also request you to share with as many people as you can. Today we are talking about 
reaching out to the city. Share if you're in the city. Share with as many friends in the city as you can. Share it everywhere. Share it everywhere that many people may get a privilege to have hope in Christ Jesus. See you tomorrow. May God be with you.